I recently built a high school in Bloxburg. In part one, we focused on the exterior, so the building, the courtyard, and the sports facilities. In episode two, we're going to be focusing on the interior, so the classrooms, the cafeteria. And if we don't finish it, there'll be a part three to the interior, but we'll see how it goes. So if you didn't watch part one, this is what we have so far. If it wasn't obvious, I went for a Japanese inspired high school and now it's time to focus on the interior. So let's hop in. I done a little off camera building. As in off camera building, I literally mean I placed these recent stairs that leads up into the second story and the third story. <gasps> the roof's messed up. No. Oh, well that's embarrassing. I'm gonna have to redo this entire roof. Great. I also added some buildings to the interior, which I'll show you. This is all I added to the first floor and the second floor. Just a few walls, nothing too crazy. Now I want to focus on this section here first. I wasn't sure what color palette to use, so I decided to go with the mid gray and plaster material. Some short round molding at the bottom and a flat crown molding on the top. I don't know why, but when it comes to painting walls, I suck at it. Building, fine, whatever. Decorating, love it. Painting walls, I'm just like, why? Also, shout out to my building skills. Why are these pillars like all messed up? There we go. We also need to make sure to add some fences up here so students don't like, I don't know, fall to their death. I mean, we wouldn't want that, would we? No, I don't think so. Or maybe to add some structure to the school, some traditional pillars. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know what this does. I feel like it just makes it look cool. And we also have like a massive drop here. So I'm thinking, you know what? Why not have a chandelier in the school? Is that a bit extra? Yeah, maybe. I'm sorry, as if you wouldn't want a chandelier in your school. Leaning down on you when you walk in. And as for the entry area, I seen this photo on Pinterest and I love how they had all the lockers. So we're gonna do something similar. However, these Bloxburg lockers are way too expensive. Look, lady, whatever you're selling, I ain't buying, yo. My name is Skylar White, yo. So guess what, Pookie? We shall be building our own lockers using simplicity wardrobes. Yes. And if you're wondering how do I turn this into a locker, make it blue metal. Get some of these thin square beams. Outline the locker. I just realized it's gonna be so annoying if I can't copy this of all the beams. Like if I have to place this one by one, I may potentially lose my mind. Okay, so once you do that, we then make little fake air vent thingies. You know the ones lockers have? I don't know. Australian schools don't really use lockers. We have lockers, but no one uses them and if you do use them everyone looks at you like what are you doing what are you doing so there we go that is our locker okay can we copy this <gasps> we can thank the lord because i was not placing it all again the top's a little bit messed up but am i gonna fix it probably not the school is weirdly very clean so we're just gonna have random stuff on top of the lockers good thing with these fake lockers is at least this way people can actually interact with them and change their avatars outfit so creative genius if i say so myself also what's up with this lighting girl it's starting to creep me out like, fix yourself please as i was reading your comments on part two i don't know why but this comment made me laugh so much someone was just like you better continue this series alaska there's like this ongoing joke in my channel where i'll start a series and i'll just never finish it <laughs> you can be kidding me guys that was the old me okay yeah you know, the funny thing is i don't even know how many series i have on my channel so i mean hey if you have a series that you want me to finish on my channel comment it and let me know because guess what i've probably forgotten about it okay i've also added some posters on the walls i'm eventually going to make a map of the school so that way people will know where they're going so i think that's the front entrance to our high school now for the left wing this is technically going to be the hallway i also want a little teacher's office here where you sign in i remember my first day of high school school I was so nervous I went to a school that none of my friends used to go to so my first day I was like so nervous because I'm like I don't know who to talk to I don't know anyone and an even worse thing is on my first day of high school I was literally late I missed like the welcoming assembly and I just had no idea where to go it gave you like a map of the school and I was literally walking around with a map in my hand because I'm like I don't know where to go where am I so as for these hallways, I'm going to leave them relatively empty, except on the walls, I might have some benches and maybe some bins as well. No littering in my school. Oh, a little fire extinguisher. I kind of forgot we have this. I don't know if I want warm lighting for the hallway or cool lighting like this, or you know what? A mixture of both. Just thinking another thing we can have on the bottom here is more lockers, but instead of cupboards, we can use cubby shelving mixed with these fabric storage cubes and add little tiny handles. Say like that. Perfect. thousand dollars? What do you mean things cost money? in books okay, now for this teacher's office here okay so we can have the door here the sign in area is a bit small so we're gonna keep it very minimalistic in here there's usually two ladies working at the front office not by you guys but one of them was like so mean and then the other one was a complete angel i was someone who was sick a lot during high school there'd be days where i was really late to school and i'd have to walk up to the front office and sign in and be like hey i'm late and the office lady she goes oh, 
again like girl it's your job to sign me in um if you don't like me that's fine but you know watch them out oh should we have computers yes we should and on these folders back here we'll have just a bunch of these desk organizers and we'll just have some random books scattered on here as well and plants because teachers love their plants so that's the sign and area done so now we can start working on the classroom salem is literally asleep on my desk like right next to me just standing what kind of cat just stands up when he's sleeping now for the classrooms i want this to be a little bit warmer than the rest of the school if that makes sense so for the floors we're going to use planks this is such a narrow hallway so maybe just to break up how ominous they look we'll have a few lockers in between and just a few more benches to make it less creepy right now it's looking like the hallway of hell so in most japanese classrooms that i was looking at they'll have windows inside of the class so i was like you know what that's kind of a cool concept so i'll do something similar oh and i forgot i was meant to make this an entryway so we'll quickly add this here before i forget should we probably like label the class like what class it is yeah we should probably do that we we'll just have a painting next to the door that says what class it is that way you won't pull me and accidentally walk into science when you have English. Yes, I done that. Yes, I walked out 20 minutes into the lesson, really embarrassed. <laughs> So, classroom number one, I think I want this to be English. I mean, a good thing about this is once we do one of the classrooms, we can kind of copy the same concept instead of going back and forth and back and forth. So, for the chalkboard, I usually just add a painting and then outline it. So then this way, if I get a cube and then place it on the top here, I can place things such as pen cups, some markers, calculator, and just random school supplies. We can even have a notice board here, and you can have like little taped photographs on the top. We also need somewhere to place all the bags. Some high schools will have these outside of the class and some will have them inside and then some high schools just won't have them at all and you have to bring your bag with you as you sit down. What else do we have in a classroom? A clock maybe? Ah uh, yes, a clock. As for the tables and the chairs, I'm just going to use something very traditional. It's a plain, boring high school table except for some reason Boxburg does not have them. So yes, we will be having to make them ourselves. Okay, don't call me Bill Nye the Science Guy, but I'm pretty sure if we place the cubes on top of one single cube, you can copy it. So all basic shapes like this, one more on the top, we'll paint it like a traditional classroom table. Oh, and then there we go, it actually works. And luckily for us, we can just copy these instead of building them all over again. For the chairs, we might just use these folding chairs. And I would usually give all of these students laptops, but considering this is English, you know what, they can read a oh and i guess pens and pencils okay so then lastly we just need our teacher's desk so we'll just have this in the corner right here and don't worry the teachers can get laptops guys i don't know about your guys's english teacher my english teacher was so mean to me friends would be talking and she'd look at me and she'd be like um alaska quiet please i'm like girl i didn't even open my mouth but it's fine because you know who my favorite teacher was my geography teacher and speaking of geography that is the classroom we are doing it next good news is the classrooms are practically going to be the same layout except the only difference between this classroom and the english class is that this classroom will have a massive world map on the class and i reckon for the teacher's desk instead of books we can have a globe serious question though do americans learn geography because um i had a conversation with one of you guys who just happened to be American. And you know what they say to me? Is Australia in Mexico? So yeah, that's our geography classroom. Practically the same if you ask me. And then one of the last classrooms we have is maths class, aka my least favorite subject. I hate maths. And what made it worse is I had the worst maths teacher as well. She was out to get me, I think. So she was one of those teachers that would always ask questions. And every time I knew a question, obviously I raised my hands because if you didn't, she would pick on you either way. So I raised my hand, she doesn't answer me. And when there was a question I didn't know, what does she do? She picks me. And each of the desks can have a ruler, a tissue box in case you cry because the maths equation is too hard. Like, you know a question is bad when you look over to, like, the smartest person in the room and they're crying. <laughs> okay, so they are the three classrooms all complete. Practically the same thing. Now we have this classroom over here, which I want to be culinary class, aka cooking class. <laughs> this is more of a practical class, so we have to make sure all of the furniture is interactive. We can even add those disgusting commercial display fridges. I hate these because they're $7,000. They literally just serve the same purpose as a regular fridge. Actually, now that I'm thinking of it, I'm going to change the layout of this kitchen. The teacher's section can go along this wall here. Okay, I guess this can be the teacher's cooking area. So we watch where the teacher cooks and then the student section will be in the middle here. I mean, if we schedule this out correctly, I think 
we'll be able to fit around four cooking stations and each of them are gonna be the same. So one basic counter, a sink, soap to wash up the dishes. In cooking class, I always had to do the dishes because I couldn't cook any of the food because I was always allergic. So it was literally just me doing the dishes the entire time. And one more thing we can add is maybe some spices and each section can have their own cutting board. So that looks pretty cute. And then obviously a hood light and then we'll just have all the pans along the back wall here. Oh, we might even add some more microwave and just in case someone accidentally burns down the kitchen we'll have a fire extinguisher and isn't someone i mean me because i suck at cooking anyway so culinary class is complete which means the left wing is all done so i think the next thing i want to do is the assembly room or gym room whatever you want to call it this shall go in here i kind of forgot how massive this gym is it's okay because we will make it work all along the walls here i want to add seats if i put three plain stairs on the edge like this then this way i can have basic shapes in the middle that technically act as our seats and then if we want to actually sit on them we'll copy these long metal benches from the hallway and just add them in the middle like this see genius mentality my darling Okay, and now that the seats are done, up the top here, we can have massive posters of the school. Okay, and now for the lights. This reminds me, I used to always be late to school assemblies. And the annoying thing is you couldn't sit wherever you wanted in the assembly room. So in my homeroom, I would have to go all the way to the front of the assembly to sit down, which was really annoying. Also, I changed my mind. We're not making this assembly. We're making this a swimming pool instead. Don't you guys just love when I change my mind halfway through building something? I bet you love that so much. I bet it's just the best feeling ever. Uh, this I don't know why I changed my mind. I just felt like a pool would look cooler than an assembly. And also, I feel like I would use it more. To be honest, no one's going to use my assembly. Everyone's going to use the pool room. We love pools. And a cute little build hack I do with my pools is in between these ropes, I add huge round rods that look like the floaties that go in between the pool. And then for the finishing and the starting line, these party banners. Say, voila, we have a pool. Oh, and just in case people need to change into their swimwear, more lockers. Okay, so on a good note, the left wing of the school is all complete so now we just have the right wing to go so first up we have this hallway here which you guessed it is going to be exactly the same as the other hallway you want to say a little magic trick <gasps> the hallway is complete how did i finish it so fast okay so this hallway leads straight into the cafeteria so i'm thinking instead of a door like the left wing we're just gonna have two massive entrances this way there's much less clutter in the hallway when students try to come through and get their lunch so for the cafeteria there's many different cafeterias we can do but i think i want to go for something like this so something neat not too crowded keep it very minimalistic except we'll leave this section clear because this is going to be the cafeteria where people line up and get their food maybe to take up the least amount of space as possible we'll use a mixture of folding chairs and these modern hairpin benches see she kind of cute or whatever not too much clutter on the table so maybe a few napkins some sauces oh and trays of course okay i think it was a good idea using these benches instead of just filling them up with chairs okay so this section of the cafeteria is done the reason we have a door here is because this is going to be the library but for now we'll just add a few posters inside of the cafeteria and we cannot forget trash cans as for the rest of the cafeteria we have two bathrooms here so people can grab their lunch. We need to make sure to add heaps of photo frames. I used to be friends with this person during high school and she would order the same thing from the cafeteria every single day. I'm not kidding. It was a chocolate milk with chicken nuggets every single morning. In my head, I was like, do you not get sick of that every single day? <laughs> again. But then again, I literally have the same lunch every day. So I can't say anything. I'm not going to have the line here. I'm just going to assume people are going to line up in an orderly manner. I mean, you guys will definitely line up in an orderly Matter, right? So inside the kitchen, a little display case here, some cookies or whatever you sell at a canteen. That's the word, canteen. I kept calling this the cafeteria. I'm like, no, it's not called a cafeteria. I love the lunch ladies at my school. Like they were such sweethearts. I hope they're doing well, honestly. Okay, this is a little cafeteria kitchen, nothing too crazy. Am I missing things? I mean, I feel like I'm always missing things. Maybe some pans. Oh, and sticky notes. This way the lunch ladies will know who ordered what. All right, cafeteria is done. 
which means the first part of our school is all complete. If you're wondering why I haven't started this room yet, it's because it's two stories. So we'll finish that in part three. However, I think that's enough for part two. So let's go have a look at what we've done so far. So now that part two of our school is all complete, so far this school comes to $567,000. And as soon as we walk in, we have the entrance to the school, which is exactly how I envisioned it to be. I love these custom lockers because you can actually use them, which is really cool. For example, that's how I wanted to change my outfit. Boom. I can change my outfit. I don't know why this is in my outfit folder. I don't know what's going on. And over to the left wing, as you can see, we have an example of a map. This is obviously not the map of the school, but eventually it's going to be a map of the school. And if we make our way through the left wing, we of course have the front office where we sign in. And then if we keep coming this way, we have all of the classrooms. So for example, we have classroom one, which is the culinary class. It's pretty spacious, to be honest. I think each cooking station fits two people, so it's pretty spacious. This is where the teacher goes and it shows the class. And then if we go to classroom number two, we have the English classroom. Just ignore the fact that this book currently says biology. So yeah, one thing about these classrooms is they're pretty much all the same. For example, this is our English class. And then this is classroom three, aka the geography class. A few minor changes, but nothing too significant. And then classroom number four, aka maths class. Ew. My maths class in high school literally had this exact meme. I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but literally this exact meme. My teacher was very weird. So yeah, this is math class. I don't want to be in here longer than I have to. And then the last room we have on the left wing is the hall room, which was originally the hall, but I hate halls and I hated assemblies. So I'm making it a hall room instead. So now over to the right wing. Oh wait, was it the left wing or the right wing? I think it was the right wing. I'm going to say the right wing. So if we come through the right wing, we have another massive hallway that leads straight into the cafeteria. To be honest, I like the way the cafeteria turned out. It's not too crazy. I like the aesthetic as well. And then we have, of course, of course, the canteen room. And then the bathroom's over here. And if you're like, Alaska, why don't you go inside the bathroom? Listen, all right? Because I've got to add the bathrooms, but I will next episode, I promise. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed part two of my little school series. The school is actually turning out so cute and I can't wait to finish it next episode. So make sure to stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.